Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Michael Appel on the line. He's Managing Director and Head of re the Retail Practice over at Getzler, Henrik & Associates. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Great to be with you. All right, Michael. So excited to get into today's topic. So driving performance and results through embracing technology for retail turnaround. And you've been working on retail turnaround for quite some time. So excited to get into that. But before we do, we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with what we like to call our Mission Matters Minute. So Michael, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Michael, what mission matters to you? Well, the mission that matters to me is to work with with uh, retail companies on all parts of the spectrum from uh, companies that want to improve performance who are doing well to companies that are stressed or for companies that are up against the wall. And we have a great uh, firm, Getzler Henrik, that has focused on helping uh, companies across all all types of industries. Um, uh, for over 55 years mm -hmm. to uh, to to navigate the challenges uh, of, uh, of of business, and I had the retail practice, and that's my focus. Yeah, what um like like how how did you get interested in restructuring initially? Like where did all that start for you? Okay, well it it, it I sort of fell into it to tell you the yeah. truth, and I spent the first 20 years of my career uh, in you know as a merchant first at Bloomingdale's for 10 years. Uh, then at a company called Fortunoff, which was the sort of a precursor to Bed Bath and Beyond, mm -hmm. and then I was president of a company called uh, Hoffritz, which was mm -hmm. a gift um, specialty retailer, a national specialty retailer that that focused on on cutlery and personal care. And uh, after I I left that company uh, uh, in the early '90s, most of the companies that that were out there were experiencing some some form of difficulty. So mm. I started working with challenged retailers or retailers that needed an interim CEO uh, and uh, and help them navigate through those challenges. Uh, mm. And that's how it's that's how it started. And then I had I had my my own firm for many years. I worked for one of the, the premier uh, turnaround firms called uh, uh, Alex Partners, and for the last two years, I've led the retail practice at Getzler Henrik, which is really the premier um, uh, turnaround and restructuring and operational improvement firm that's focused on the middle market. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that that's an, in a nutshell. All right. That's, I want to I want to stay in those early years a bit longer because obviously we're going to be talking about digital and some of the things that are that are taking place now in present day retail, you know, turnarounds. But what were some of the challenges that people were were facing or retailers were facing earlier in your career? Like, like how did all that start? Well, I mean, look, re retail is always a, is 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 the fastest moving uh, yeah. industry out there because it's closest to the consumer. So with retail and retail is a difficult business because you have to be good at so many things. So mm -hmm. and you can have and you can do every right, everything right. And then all of a sudden you have a macro event and mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you have to pivot and figure out how to get through it. So so I think that that that's you know, that's a sort of the unifying factor mm -hmm. in that regard in the in the you know, in the early days, I think, you know, when when everything was done sort of manually. Right. right. Uh, you know, I can, I can remember doing assortment plans and, you know, spreadsheets almost manually. And then, then you got to Excel, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you look at the, the change it, is that, you know, the ability, the ability to process large amounts of data, mm. right. And come up with the right answer, uh, through technology, I think has been, it's a game changer yeah. and, uh, and 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 also just the ability for companies to embrace technology in running their business and turning around their business has mm -hmm. made it has made a huge difference. And you know, I we, you know that's something that that despite the fact that I've been in business you know for for many years, that I've always been very interested in and open to mm -hmm. and embraced. Um, mm -hmm. And and I think you know companies companies whether they're healthy or 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 stressed that don't. Mm -hmm that 
are mm-hmm. going to have a really difficult time surviving today. Yeah, and I love I love a good Excel story, Michael. Anytime I get to plug it in, because I feel like we we take it for granted so much right now. But that Excel changed banking. It, I mean, it changed so yeah. many industries. So I just like that you even said it. That at one point, for all of our younger audience out there, Excel didn't exist, and we had to do things manually, right? Exactly, exactly. And you know, and somehow you figured it out. But and and but 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 that's because that's what was available. Yeah. And now today, if you go into a company and they're doing everything on Excel, you you know that that's a problem, right? And <laughs> and and also, you know the 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 technology platforms that are available to retailers today, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's not very difficult for for most companies to be able to implement those platforms, mm-hmm. and so you know, both from a cost and time and resource perspective, it's just so much easier. And then of course you have the cloud as well. So you've got all these opportunities that are there. The biggest Mm -hmm. challenge very often with many of of my clients is to get them to embrace change, right? Uh, Because change is very, is for, for most people is very scary. I look at it exactly the opposite, which is, you know, this is an opportunity to, to turn your business around, to improve Mm -hmm. your operations, it's great. And, you know, for most of the today, for most of the technology solutions that are out there, mm-hmm. most of these companies will, will do a proof of concept. So you're not you're not betting the ranch, you know, in, in, in that regard. You're able mm-hmm. to to make, you know, to to, uh, uh, to to do that proof of concept, see the ROI so mm-hmm. that when you pull the trigger, you've got a pretty good idea what's going to work. And mm-hmm. then the issue becomes, OK, with all of the different solutions out there. What are the ones that are really going to work mm. for your company and have the most impact? And yeah. those are the, you know, the prior prioritization of that is, is very important. Mm. So, Michael, circling back to something you said, you said retail can be a, a, a difficult business because maybe you do everything right. And then something macro happens or some other external event happens that you have no control over. And all of a sudden you have to pivot or figure out or to navigate um, other than let's just say COVID, because that's a very recent example. What are some other examples like throughout well, your career or example that you've seen something and you're like, man, like all these businesses, uh, you know, like what are some things that you've seen? Yeah, well, well, COVID's an extreme example, but yeah. you know, uh, but I think it's you know the the financial. I'm I'm, uh, uh you know, in, in COVID's an extreme example, but but when you look at um, uh, the the uh, the financial crises, the real mm-hmm. estate crises, the savings and loans crises, yeah. they all had an effect on on the economy right Mm -hmm. and in most of these situations and when you think about the great recession of 2008 2009 that was a combination of real estate the stock market that basically you know it almost turned out turned off the spigot of of uh of of people spending for a period of time and it also affected the the luxury market for the first time so when you when you think about those things all right uh there's always something that comes around the corner all right mm. and and so you have to be you have to be able to say okay quickly assess the situation what's mm. going to happen and what are the levers that you have to pull right to yeah. uh to be able to uh uh to, to to navigate your way through uh to the other side and i would say the th- the, the one thing that is always uh a, a big que- a, a, a big issue is mm. liquidity right because yeah. if you don't have the, the, the sufficient liquidity to, to buy you the time to navigate through these these crises that could be unforeseen, mm-hmm. then you're going to be you're going to be in trouble. So and I started as a merchant. So, yeah. you, you know, uh, I, I sort of went to the other side, which is, well, if you don't have if you don't have sufficient liquidity, mm-hmm. then everything else is, is immaterial in that mm-hmm. in, in that regard. So you always have to, to focus on 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 that piece of it as well. Yeah. Do you feel starting as a merchant helped you and being able to execute what you do now? Absolutely. I think that, you know, it's sort of my, my, my secret sauce because yeah. the world in it's which in your I blood, live, right? Like it's in your blood. <laughs> well, and, and also, I mean, I think the, the issue is today with, with restructuring mm-hmm. is that uh, you can, you can always, not always, but in a restructuring situation, you can, you can restructure your balance sheet. But if you don't fix your business model, mm-hmm. all right, you'll come out of chapter 11 or restructuring 
and you know it won't be long before you're you're back where you started and i think that the ability and and when you're doing when you're doing a turnaround it's the ability you have to work on multiple on, on multiple levels at the same time mm. so you can't you have to work on parallel on parallel paths so obviously you, you're looking at liquidity you're looking at the at your balance sheet but at the same time you're looking at the, you've got to start looking at the at, at business operations mm -hmm. right both from a merchandising perspective supply chain perspective uh human resources perspective yeah. and attack all of them at the same time so that you can you can get to the other side and have a viable business uh, when, mm -hmm. when you're, you know, when you're finished with the, uh, with your restructuring activities, whether it's in court or out of court. Yeah. How is it working with like, what's it like working with the teams, um, that you're working with? I mean, and I mean, specifically at the companies that you're restructuring. I mean, I think it, I, I'm just, I'm, you know, from my outside vantage point looking in, I'm just thinking, you know, you come into this, 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 um, this company that needs to be restructured and, you know, maybe some of the management's going to stay, maybe some of them have to go or be replaced. You're also looking at the model overall of a business and seeing, is it viable? Like, what's it like working with those teams? Well, every situation is different, okay, yeah. and and so and you have to recognize that fact, and you have to look a you have to assess is this going to be a viable business going forward mm -hmm. or not, and a lot of these things you have to do pretty quickly, right? Yeah. You have to assess the viability of the business, and assuming that you feel that it has a viable business model, then you, you know I have sort of my little playbook, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, assuming that that's the case, uh, my playbook is. A, you have to get a you have to get a deep understanding of your customer, right? Mm. Because if you have an understanding of your customer, the things that you do will 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 be logical and make sense. Mm -hmm. And very often, I go into companies both in retail and cons and consumer products, and particularly in retail, they have very little consumer research. Mm. So you know, we try to if they don't have it, we try to 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 quickly but thoroughly, thoroughly get consumer research to understand who the customer segments are. You know, the old, the old retail thing was, was well, I, I know who my customer is. Well, yeah. you know, it's not one customer. You may have four or five different customer segments that behave differently. And you need mm -hmm. to understand that. And you need to decide, well, who are the, the segments that are going to, uh, that you're going to win with. Right. Mm -hmm. So for example, when I was running route 21, uh, we had five customer segments, Three of them were very, very interested in fashion, uh, and two regarded, you know, regarded clothing as either utilitarian or I'm going to buy the cheapest thing that's out there, right? Mm. So, so if you're in the fashion business, you don't want people that are that are interested that are you know are, are only interested in utilitarian or 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 cheap clothing because mm -hmm. you'll you'll never make money on them. So then you have to focus on the customers that are aligned with your brand, and you mm. do that, and then. So, so, so you have the, the understanding of your customer, which is kind of basic, you would think, but you'd be surprised how many, how many pretty big companies don't really have a very clear picture mm -hmm. of who their segments are. So, so you, you need to do that. Then you obviously have to assess your team very quickly and say, you know, who, who can, who can uh, stay and who needs to go. Yeah. And, and I think there are some, comp there are some people in the business that, they just want to come in and and clean house, and I don't believe that. I think you've got to look at your team, and you may, you know, your merchant or your marketing person may be weak, but your supply chain guy and your HR person uh, is, is strong. So you have to say, okay, you want to make sure that you keep the mm -hmm. DNA of the company, right? You don't want to lose that because it's very easy to do that, and and you have to remember too is that for most of these companies, they were quite successful at one time. So mm -hmm. why were they successful? You know, what what do you want to keep and what do you need to, to change? And then the other piece of it, as I said, is once you have that, okay, uh, those, those elements, then you can start to execute the other and, and mm -hmm. you have to execute against against product. Right. Because everybody sometimes when you when you when people talk about retail, you hardly ever hear them talking about product. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's AI or theft. Yeah. or this or that and they're all important but it all ends starts and ends with the product right because yeah. that's the business that you're in why and do you think so, that is by the way 
Like, why do you think that people don't talk about his product as much? Like, why do you think that is? We've gotten away from it. I agree with you, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I think part of it is because you have a lot of, you you don't have the same, very often you don't have the same training Hmm. that you had. And also that, especially with the larger businesses, they're very siloed. Yeah. And, you know, when, listen, when I started many years ago at, at, at Bloomingdale's, I mean, you, you had a, 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 a different kind of training. All right. Mm-hmm. And you had, you had really fabulous merchants mm-hmm. where product, you know, it started with the product and understanding mm-hmm. the customer. And I think today that's not as much the case where you do see that I think is with the uh, sort of the entrepreneurial startups mm-hmm. uh, that, and that's where a lot of the talent is today, as opposed to the larger, um, uh, more more kind of siloed uh, yeah. companies. So uh, talk to me about the um, talk to me about the competition for for retailers and competing with giants like Amazon, and especially yeah. when it comes to since we're talking about product like and, and kind of systems. I mean, free shipping, no free shipping. What does that cost? Does it make well, sense for the model? Right. I mean, talk about just what you see in that space. Yeah. Like, the- well, I think I think the issue is is that you know if you've got it's very important for for you to have a uh, differentiated or curated product mm-hmm. so that whether it's online or in stores the, you know whether it's the it's your own branded product or mm-hmm. if you're curating that the assortments are 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 things that people will come to you for all right yeah. and and will appreciate and i and i think that um and when then when you get to that if you mm-hmm. if you've got something people want all right then you, you should not be in the business of losing money. And I think the issue with Amazon, as I've always said, is that, it, you know, everybody equates Amazon with free shipping. Well, it's not free shipping. You spent 150 bucks a year, yeah. right? To, to, but, but people forget after they, they paid the 150 bucks that they think it's free. Well, it's mm. not. All right. You've just paid your ship, a lot of the shipping up front in that regard. And, and for a lot of retailers, you know, they're, 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 they're afraid not to offer the same level of, of free shipping, but it's not really free, right? And yeah. one of the things we found, and Getzler, you know, my firm has been in the forefront of advising our clients, you know, for the at least the last two years, mm-hmm. uh, that they have to look at, at you know, analytically, uh, the shipping thresholds, free mm-hmm. returns, all those things. And we found with with quite a few of our clients is that they were they were doing free shipping at 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 uh, uh, amounts that were lower than their average, uh, their average uh, 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 sale. All right. Wow. So and so in some cases, we just said, OK, you know, you're, you're doing free shipping after uh, over 50 bucks. Your average sales 100. I mean, you should be you should be charging for every, anything under 100 bucks or mm-hmm. maybe even a little bit more. And that and, maybe changes the profitability kind of immediately. It's depending, tremendous. Right? And then the other piece of it, too, is the issue of free returns. Mm-hmm. Right. And and free returns are a lot more costly than people think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the thing about it is, is that it is that because when you when you when you encourage when you you encourage free returns, you're also encouraging people to order more than they need to. All right. Mm-hmm. And especially you see this, of course, in shoes or anything where where, you know, you need to try it on or you're not sure. Zappos, and, that model. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I listen, I was at the the uh, Sourcing Journal conference in New York and one of the top executives at Zappos mm-hmm. sort of said, he says, you know, my family even does it because it's, <laughs> because it doesn't cost me anything to return it. On the <laughs> other hand, on the other hand, it actually does, because not only is it the cost of processing, but also you've, you've also spent this money on marketing, right, mm. to, to make the sale. So you've lost that, too. Yeah. So it's quite co- it's quite costly. And the other piece of it, too, is and, and again, this is about product. OK, mm-hmm. you know, the a big reason why product gets returned um, other than you just make it too easy for them, for mm-hmm. the customers, is that the fit is a problem. So mm-hmm. if you are really if you as a company really have a, a fit that consumers uh, trust, then they're not going to order three sizes or two sizes. They're yeah. going to order their size and and they're going to they're going to keep it. So <laughs> and that has a big effect on profitability. Yeah. And, and it's 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 something that 
I think that the industry is grappling with now because all of a sudden we're seeing even Amazon's charging a buck if you return it to UPS. All right. Mm. And but if you look at a lot of other retailers today, they're starting to address the issue because, you know, especially if they have, you know, if they have large e-commerce businesses, mm -hmm. they think, you know, it, 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 financially it doesn't work out. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide you have to decide are am I better off to have a bigger business where I lose money or am I better off to have a business that's smaller where I make a lot of money? Mm -hmm. And and uh, uh, and and I think, again, you know. If the product's great, the cu the customer, you know, will will as long as as your policies are fair, uh, they'll they'll go along with you in that. Michael, regard. sign me up for that really profitable one, okay? <laughs> <There's plenty laughs> so, <of them>. Okay, <laughs> I'm raising my hand for that one, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> Let, let's get into the uh, into the technology component a little bit here. Right. So, like when we're talking about retail and a turnaround, obviously, I, one of the things you mentioned earlier that I think I like to bring up again is that at some point, like these businesses were at some point successful, right? Something made them successful to grow at some point. Now, um, over time, whether they would depends on the size of business, obviously, but if they're, um, but at some point did technology leave them behind? Is it, is it maybe like not adopting new technologies fast enough? Like regarding technology, where do businesses kind of get themselves in trouble? Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, the first thing you have to talk about is uh, really in terms of, of, of technology as a, as a, a tool is it doesn't replace people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, it's a tool for the executives to run their business better. And the problem the, the issue that retailers have been facing in terms of profitability is that today, you know, years ago, retailers were, were bricks and mortar, right? And maybe yeah. they had a, a catalog operation. Today, m most retailers, in order to be competitive, right, mm -hmm. have to be on the channel. So you've got your bricks and mortar, you've got your e-commerce, you may have a direct mail component, mm -hmm. and you have you have to be active on social media, which yeah. means that you that the cost of doing business has become so much greater than it was when it was a simpler model. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, in order to become to to, to be stay profitable become more profitable you've got to be more efficient yeah. and so you have to find ways to to run your business more efficiently and that mm -hmm. can that can come in many many different uh uh ways and so the levers that you have there are many more levers than people believe okay yeah. how do you improve pro profitability okay better use of working capital which means better utilization of inventory i mean mm -hmm. we used a, a a great predictive analytics firm uh, at Rue to that to help us uh, uh, figure out what we should buy, all right, and what we shouldn't buy, and it was based on you know it, it was really based on assembling consumer panels of our customers who through through testing and gamification mm -hmm. had a history of choosing the winners, right? Mm -hmm. And so we assemble those the, you assemble those consumer panels, then you show them product you're thinking of buying, and there's a high correlation of, between high scores and success. Mm -hmm. And there's a high correlation between low scoring items and and big markdowns. So if you're doing that, you you're buying better, you're buying the right stuff, and you're not buying the things that will be you know, that that would be high markdowns. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a double whammy in terms of being more profitable. And you're 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 able you should be able to to buy it in the right quantities so that you're turning the merchandise faster. And that's particularly mm -hmm. obviously very important in in uh, in apparel, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in that regard. So that's one element there. And then but it but technology extends to every part of your business. I mean, one of the things we did at Rue when I was there was we knew that our customer was a lower income customer and they had limited access to credit. So we were the second company in the United States to ad adopt uh, Klarna, which was the buy now, pay later um, uh, platform. And and that addressed uh, the, the ability of our customer. They could buy more. They could buy more one more item. Well, that, has, that had an immediate impact on sales hmm. in, in that regard. And we were also kind of serving our customer because th they wanted it, but they couldn't afford it, right? And yeah. so that that is addressing, and now, of course, it's almost ubiquitous. Almost almost hmm. every retailer's got it. 
so so that's another example of of that you know and 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 then another example that had to do with with uh, learning platforms and mm. and and tr and because one of the big issues today in retail mm. is recruiting training and keeping your frontline employees yeah we all know that right when we go in and it, there's nothing that's more depressing is to go into a store that even if they have employees on the floor right you ask them a question and they they can't answer it uh, that's yeah it hurts especially it's so hard to get a consumer in the store like exactly yeah. exactly so if you can and 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 there's statistics on this if mm -hmm. if you've got a great learning platform all right uh then you know you can you can from the point that they come that start to work for you their onboarding is done properly they're continually learning they feel better about their own ability to interact with customers and and they stay and yeah. reducing turnover can can have a huge effect on on both revenue and profitability yeah. uh and that's a and and the thing about it is it's really interesting uh, in that you know that there's again there's this feeling well you know for, for most retailers you know turnover on the front line the sales associates going to be over 100 percent etc well I mean, Costco. You know what Costco's turnover is? Oh my gosh! They, they showed on their badge when something seven percent. How much? Okay, seven percent. I didn't know it was that low, but I know yes. on the badges that they have, like I think it says like they're the how one many years year they've they been started. There, right? and I'm always amazed and shocked when I'm like, wow, how do they do it? Yeah, how do they do it? They do it because they they value their hmm. their associates. They treat them right. Hmm. They pay them well, and they get productivity. So and and they have you know happy employees. So when you go into Costco and you ask somebody a question, they're more than happy to help you out. So you have a great you have a great experience in mm. in, in in that regard. Yeah. And so and it shows you it can be done, right? There are retailers that can do it, and they're mm. the ones that are making money. Yeah, uh, for sure. Well, Michael, I just have to say, you know, it's been great having you on the show today to learn more about the work you're doing, of course, and also uh, just to document. I mean, I learned a lot about retail. I didn't know. I'm, I, it's interesting to track that journey. Um, but that being said, I mean, what's next? What's next for you? What's next for the company? Okay. Well, well, for me, really, it's like it's really to, to continue to serve our customers mm -hmm. uh, and build our retail practice, and which we're doing, and we brought on board some fabulous. Uh, managing directors and directors and associates, mm -hmm. uh, and we feel that we're, you know, we give we give our customers, we give our clients, all right, the same degree of personalized service mm -hmm. and expertise that some of the larger firms out there do at a much lower price. Which mm -hmm. in the in the in the middle market is really important because you know a, a two hundred million dollar company or a fifty million dollar company mm -hmm. just can't can't afford. Uh, what a, a, a you know a multi-billion dollar company can of do. Of course. So, and we like to work very, very closely with our with the management teams, so that so that it's a collegial, uh, cooperative effort to get mm -hmm. to the best answer. And yeah. so we've been pretty successful in that, and we're looking forward to to growing the business and continuing to uh, to evolve with 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 the retail and consumer uh, products uh, landscape. Mm. If somebody's watching this and they want to connect with you and your team, how do how do they do that? Two ways. You can you can email me directly at mapel m a p p e l at getzlerhenrich.com or call me directly at 917-789-3615. And we're, we're always happy to to chat. Fantastic. Um, and, and so we'll put we'll put more information in the show notes, of course, on how, how to connect with Michael. And uh, speaking of the audience, if, if this is your first time with Mission Matters and you haven't hit that subscribe button, hey, the wait is over. No need to wait anymore. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, we definitely love to have you back. Well, this is a daily show and we're bringing you experts each and every day. Michael, really, it has been a pleasure. Thanks so much again for coming on the show. Adam, an absolute pleasure and look forward to staying in touch.